Okay, we've painted this colorful sky and uh, it's still wet. And so while it's wet, that's a great time to put in the distant tree line. So I'm going to go with ultramarine blue, some quinacridone violet, some burnt umber. I want a real dark color in here. But I want that, and I want these to be soft though. So I'm going to take the rolls of tape I had underneath here that were lifting it up. Um, come in here real quick. And a brush that fans out is really good for this. So I'm going to switch to a brush that I know will fan out a little bit. And I'm looking at that too now. I remember what I said in the past that it dries lighter. So I'm going to, I'm going to beef this up a little bit as far as the value. Okay, let's just kind of gently fan the brush out and indicate soft trees back there. I don't want them to be real hard-edged. If you have trouble making a straight line, a five-gallon paint stirring stick works great. Just tip it at about a 45-degree angle. Let your brush ride along the top of that rail. And you can go back and forth until you get the straight line that you're after. Um, I use this occasionally. Most of the time I freehand it, but uh, I know for some people, and a lot of people, it's really hard to make that, uh, make that line straight. Now we'll go to the foreground. And for that, I'm going to use, go back to my gamboge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a white gap right here. Because this is wet, I don't want this bleeding down into the... Uh, this water, I'm going to create water in the foreground. So I'm just kind of, this is where the straight edge really helps. Okay, now I'm going to shift to a cadmium orange. Let the glow, more of a yellow glow be here near the tree line. And then we'll start adding a little more warm colors as we come up this way. Again, I've got this brush fanned out. Keeping the glow right in here to match this. I'll go to my permanent rose. Fan the brush out. By fanning the brush out, I can keep some of these light areas in the water. You can hear that brush sliding across that straight edge. I'm just going to uh, put a little more violet with it right here in the foreground which is quinacridone violet and a little bit of ultramarine blue. I want that a little deeper color. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna dry this and uh, then we'll finish this off. Okay, this is dry now, so now I can come in here and put some of the water in here. Some of the reflections on the water. So again, I'm gonna use this stick. I got a round brush that uh, fans out pretty good. But the first thing I want to do is I want to keep a point on it and just run right along that water line like that. Then I'm going to fan it out and make some quick strokes. And if I lose part of that horizon, that water line uh, in the trees, the distance, I don't mind that. Um, I can always put it back in, but I kind of like the fact that it shows up and then it disappears as opposed to a straight line all the way across. So now I'm going to kind of bring some sap greens into this picture. So I'm going to take that same dark color that I just used here. I'm going to add a little bit of sap green to it and kind of ground this area. Now it may not even show up on the, on the camera but uh, it will show up on the original here obviously I don't want to go bright I want this to because I want it to uh, kind of be dark down here I want this to pop right in here this area okay, let's just kind of fill that in a touch but real quick strokes if you go real quick you can get that nice dry brush effect and I'm using a uh, arches 140 pound rough paper uh, it's really uh, really my, my favorite paper Okay, now I know that's probably not going to show up on, uh, on the camera, but trust me, it's, it's got a little bit of a greenish tint to it. If 
Here I'm going in here with clear water just to soften some of these edges a little bit. Doesn't have to be harsh there. Okay. Now that white horizon line there, or bottom of the tree line there, doesn't need to be white. So I'm going to take a light wash and just go over it just to knock it back a little bit. Let it stay right in here, the strongest glow. And this dark color I have with the sap green and the ultramarine blue, um, I'm going to fan this brush out and just gently indicate some weeds in here. Not going to get really carried away with it, just a suggestion of some weeds coming off these little pieces of land that are coming into the water. It's one of those cases where less, less is more. Okay. Now I'm looking in through here. I think maybe I want to just kind of soften this a little bit. First of all, I'm just going to lay a wash of this uh, permanent rose in here. Once that's in there, I'm going to also try to loosen this up right here, lighten it up. You wouldn't have to do that, but it's just kind of one of those things that I see that. And it'd be nice to be a little softer right there. Permanent rose in there. Knock that back with some permanent rose. I like that. Okay, I think that looks that looks pretty good. Let me dry that. Okay, that's dry now. So let's let's just uh, let's throw a few trees in here. I'm going to take a round brush. This is a number eight, and I'm going to sweep again. You want to go quick. You don't want to slow down here. Kind of decide where you want to go. Take a practice run or two, and then just go for it. Again, this is textured paper, so it really picks it up. So I'm going to have to slow down a little bit so it fills in a little bit more. And in this case, I'm going to use a little more water with it so it'll fill in all those little areas that, uh, that were showing up. Okay, I like that. Once you get that in there, you can adjust it. You can make it fatter if you want. Um, it's in place, so you can go back over it. You can slow down. But I do want to see some of this dry brush effect in it, so that's a, that's a reason to go fast. Let's just put a smaller one in here. And maybe another one that comes off the page right here. I especially like the, the dry brush effect there because it gives the feeling that the light is glowing right in there by that tree. Here I'll fill it in a little bit more. Then I'll go to a little bit smaller brush. Actually, this is a little script brush. These are great for putting in branches. Just use what I call a little bit of a stutter stroke. And then maybe a smaller one here. See if you go if you go fast, you get that dry brush effect. Okay, I want that glow on these on these trees here. So I'm going to take some cadmium orange, some gamboge, take some of the permanent rose that's in your palette too. And on the left side, where the sun is hitting it, I'm going to stroke in this warm color. I'm looking at that and it looks good right now, but I know it's going to dry um, a little dark because it is transparent over that dark color. So I'm going to take just a touch of titanium white with that color I was just using. Just a hint of white, just to give some opacity to it. And I think that's enough. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.